unidentifiable flying object. The UFO continues to be a mystery. Wasn't alone in space. Sightings of UFOs. Something out there. Close enough to be observed. What could it be? It could only be a thing. A UFO. Hey, guess what? We're back for another bonus episode. What's going on, everybody? How are you? Thank you for coming along another journey. Thanks for supporting this thought exercise. That is UFO No. Uh, it's been weird, and it's been great. Everybody, I want to give you a little update on Blind Mike. So I've been debating on how to do this. Uh, so as I've been saying, Blind Mike is is lost in space. About to be anal probed at any moment. I've been on a rescue mission trying to get him back. I haven't even heard from him. Haven't even talked to him. Don't know, don't know where he's at. I don't even know where to begin. So, I'm trying to get him back. I'm, I'm, I, I reached out through the best meditation I could. I got really fucking high. And uh, tried to commune with whatever alien creatures might have the blind one. And I got nothing, folks. I got nothing so far. My plan is, my plan is we're coming up on our 100th episode. What the fuck? That's crazy. 100th episode. We're on bonus episode 14 right now. Going on our 100th regular episode, and I desperately want to be able to get Blind Mike back on the show so we can we can so we could get back I would love it I would love it I would love it I would love it so here's what I want I know you're probably saying like okay what the fuck here's what I want here's what I need positive vibes everybody positive vibes for the blind one because I'm going to try really hard. I'm going to try and commune really, 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 really hard and pinpoint him and get him on the show for you, my people, my friends. Uh, because I miss him, and he's a great, you know, anyways. And I'm working on a shirt, Rihanna. Uh, let me know what you guys think about that shirt that I put out there. And, of course, I got the new shirt. Uh, watch out for the government. They're shicey bastards because uh, Matthew Morfitt. Dude, thanks, dude. So, anyways. Um, prayers for the blind one is what I'm saying. Pray to whatever God you pray to, whether it be domestic or foreign. Uh, and, uh, let's get him back, y'all. Let's get him back. That's all. That's all. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Let's get him back. And I'm trying, I'm trying the best I can, but I can only do so much. I'm dumb and I don't know how to meditate appropriately. I got the ADHDs real bad. So, anyways, uh, Bill, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, buddy. He's here, everybody. It's Bill. Uh, Bill, what's going on, man? Oh, what happened to my thingy dingy? Uh, what's going on, dude? How are you? I'm chilling, man. Good. I I am I am tired as hell right now. Are you? But yeah. Oh, bummer. that's right. That's that's my normal week. Is it? <laughs> Well, yeah, that, that sucks, dude. I'm sorry. Well, don't be. I made my money out of it. There you go. There you go. That's what. That's what you got to do, man. That's that's it right there. Um. Well, I'm glad you were able to join us on the show, my friend. Very glad. I'm glad I could be here too, buddy. <laughs> so, I, really uh, I don't know if you heard my spiel about Blind Mike, but uh, put out put out positive. Yeah, that would be though. awesome. Yeah, put out positive vibes, man. That's what it's all about. Positive vibes. I'll burn an extra one every night. There you go. Me. That's it. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man. Well, um, I got a great one for you. So this one, actually, we're going to start with this. Uh, Rihanna, because of you, actually, who pointed this out to me. Now, I, it's interesting. I believe in synchronicity. I don't know if you do, Bill, uh, but I believe in synchronicities. As in things happening, 
for a reason, not really like maybe divine or whatever, but just energy, synchronized energy. Like my thoughts are connecting with somebody else's thoughts. Dude, I saw this article and then Rihanna sent it to me and I was so excited um, because I, w- I had just been looking at it and I was like, holy shit, we're vibing. So here's what it is. China discovers stunning crystal on moon nuclear fusion fuel for limitless energy. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've seen this now, obviously, uh, I don't know if you can see this bill. If you're looking at what I'm looking at, I know you have the Google document so you can open up the windows if you'd like, but I'm, I'm trying to find it. Anyways, China discovers, this is on, uh, all the links will be in the show notes, by the way. China discovers stunning moon nuclear fusion fuel for limitless energy. Uh, The fine China, the fine makes China the third country to discover a new mineral on the moon. And the country says it's analyzed the soil for rare helium-3. So. Wait, they've known about helium-3 on the moon. Have they? That's. Dude, that's like the big, that's the big reason that oh, we want to right. anything that, at all. You're right. It's that's right. The helium three. You're right. Uh, what's interesting is it's going to, it basically, I mean, look, there's already, and I'm going to get into some other things with this, but I believe there's going to be a war on the moon. So you've got China and U.S. like apparently, uh, it, it fighting over this one piece of land on the moon because of the views, because it's got proper lighting is what they were saying. Oh, the lighting that's available and the, the area that it's in, it's uh, great views. And it's like, you got the whole moon. You're going to fight China over this, you dumb fucks. So this is what they're fighting over. Yes. I exactly. think we actually covered that. In the last bonus. We episode. did, but it's because it was coming from the the standpoint of they were going for this certain landing zone. Come to find yeah. out the reason why is it wasn't because of the goddamn views. It was because of this. China's discovered a crystal from the moon made of previously unknown mineral, which also confirming that the lunar surface contains a key ingredient for nuclear fusion, a potential form of effectively Limitless power that harnesses the same forces that fuel the sun and other stars. The crystal is part of a batch of lunar samples collected by China's Chang 5 mission. Chang, which landed on the moon. That's just, I'm sorry, that was terrible. But it that's what made me think of it. Which landed on the moon in 2020, loaded up with about four pounds of rocks and delivered them to Earth days later. After carefully sifting through the samples, which are uh, the first which are the first moon rocks returned to Earth since 1976. Scientists at the Beijing Beijing Research Institute of Uranium Geology spotted a single crystal particle with a diameter smaller than the width of a human hair. What? That's insane, dude. Damn. We have a huge backlog if we still haven't gone through all our shit from 1976. Yeah, no shit. We, the we, width the of a human NASA hair. hasn't. Technically, NASA hasn't gone through everything they say. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, we lost all the technology to go back. Fuck, whatever. But China's like, all right, we did this, and we don't have a backlog. Yeah. Look what we found. <laughs> yes. We could have found that shit, like, what is that, 50 years ago, yeah. almost? Yeah. Fuck. Crazy. We're uh, fired. <laughs> the crystal is made of the novel mineral Chang Site. That's interesting that the guy's name is Chang. The name of the minerals Chang site. That's weird. Named after the Chinese moon goddess Chang. Oh, maybe. Wait a minute. I thought the guy's name was Chang. Oh, no, it was collected by China's Chang 5 mission. So the mission was named after this goddess Chang. It also inspired China's series of lunar missions. It was confirmed as a new mineral on Friday by the Commission of New Minerals. Da, 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 da. It's the and new six. It's the, it, it's the sixth name it. new mineral to be identified in moon samples and the first to be discovered by China. Here's what I want to know. That said, if these reactors do become a reality, oh, so they're talking about react. Here I skip ahead and it skips a really important part. <laughs> um, 
According to a state media, the new lunar samples also contain helium-3, a version of the element helium that is long fascinating scientists and science fiction creators because of its potential as a nuclear fusion fuel. This hypothetical form of power aims to harness energy released by atoms that merge under tremendous pressures such as those in the interiors of stars. Starlight is a ubiquitous, damn, product of nuclear fusion, but human-made fusion reactors will still likely take decades to develop, assuming they are feasible at all. That said, if these reactors do become a reality, helium-3 would be a good fuel candidate because it produces less radioactive byproducts and nuclear waste compared to other atoms, whereas helium-3 is incredibly scarce on Earth. It is abundant on the moon, a disparity that has stoked dreams of mineral of mining the mineral on the lunar surface. China has joined the U.S. and other nations in expressing interest in extracting resources. So, like you said, that is why the real reason why they're fighting for this one spot. And it's two different things. The helium-3 is something they found along with it, but this is a completely separate thing. Yep, a new mineral. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Now a it makes previously sense. unknown mineral. I, I, I came prematurely in on that <laughs> one. <laughs> As uh, as Stephen Hawking would say, not, not. <laughs> oh, that was too low. Here we go, one more time. Not. There we go. <laughs> Anyways, um, it, yeah, it's uh, it's always it's never as it seems. It's never what it seems. As soon as they come out and tell you something, you can pretty much guarantee it's not going to be that. So as soon as they're and, like, oh, we need this one spot for lighting and views and stuff, you know, oh, yeah, really? Oh, okay. And then this. Well, and they're making it to where it's not already placed together to where you can read the narrative. They're mm -hmm. breaking it up to where you actually have to at least look at it to understand yeah. what's going on. Yep. Because I, I, I'm going to be honest, I probably wouldn't have put two and two together if we weren't doing this podcast and I hadn't heard about the other one, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, that's that's the whole thing is that there these these it, it's like crimes. OK, back before in the 70s, I think it was the 70s. Serial killers wasn't even a term because no departments communicate with each other. So they didn't know that these murders were connected. If somebody killed somebody in Pennsylvania, they they weren't going to get popped with it by going to another state. And so yeah. because there, they, these, these departments weren't connecting each other, but then the FBI decides, which who knows if that's really true, um, but the FBI, deci FBI decides to go and start um, looking into all these cases and create the MO. And, and that's where they start putting together the whole serial killer thing, connected murders. This is, media is the same way. You have, you have some media outlets that don't communicate with, with each other. And so they just end up um, running these stories. But then you have a clear narrative in other cases. You know, I mean, very, very, very clear narrative. But it's, yeah, man. I mean, it's all connected. Uh, like, I mean, as soon as I saw that they, they literally said because of lighting and the view, we need this one spot on the moon. I was like, fuck you. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. No way, man. No way. Yeah, my bad. So, yeah, weird. What'd you do? My son's in the background going, ah. Oh, you're good. I couldn't hear ah. shit. I couldn't hear shit. Okay, sweet. Uh, and it's all about me. That's what matters. So, uh, anyway, so what I want to know is what do you guys think? You guys think that there's going to be a war on the moon? Because I, I'm kind of convinced of this. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm... I, I'm yeah, go ahead. I, I see it a hundred. I see it a hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, there's going to be a war on the moon, and then it's going to spill over onto Earth. Yeah. Yeah. If. Yeah. If it's. It's going to be very very interesting. That is for sure. I mean, we have no idea what this is going to look like. We have no idea. We don't even know. You know, we throw around terms like civil war now. We have no idea what that would look like nowadays. No idea. We have one reference to that. You know, aside from that, we, we have no idea what that's going to look like. 
to be to be perfectly honest. And so to sit here and be like, oh, war on the moon, man, that's going to look like this and that and this and that. Uh, who the fuck knows? What if China decides to pull a suicide run and just blow up the moon and let it fall into the earth? I mean, man, who's to stop anybody from doing that? Well, aside from right. technological limitations. But, I mean, dude, all, that's all it would take. Think about that. That's yeah. all it would take is for some crazy lunatic to say, fuck it, the world needs to end anyways. Poof, done. Poof and done. So, yeah, who knows? Uh, do you have anything more to say on these uh, potential war on the moon? Uh, well, I mean, in, I never read the books, but in the movie, uh, the time machine, yeah, that's what happens is the civilization advances to the moon and wait, 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 wait. the it. time machine, like yeah. the original, uh, the, oh, you mean the... in the nineties or two thousands? Well, I know there was an original because the original book, Time Machine, was H.G. Wells, I do believe. Yeah, yeah, okay. And then they made a movie. Yep, yep. yep. Uh, that was I. I didn't realize that he like went all the way 80s. to the moon in that. I, I for some reason no, I thought that it he was. He didn't. Oh, he didn't go to the moon. I see. So okay, so in the movie that I'm referencing is the newest adaptation of it. Like I said, it mm. was '90s or early 2000s, I believe. Yeah. Um. In and the he ends movie, up seeing that they're on the moon, yes, like through yes, the time yes. machine. I see what you mean. Uh, uh, he gets out in that time period and like finds out that you know they're up there mining the moon, and that something happened. There was a fight or something, a war, and the moon ended up cracking. Oh, and then like I see, and then like half of it actually fell to Earth. And then that's how. See, I don't know if that was in the book. Dystopian, but I don't know. I can't remember. I could be remembering it wrong. It's been a long time. I just remember the whole struggle of the, the because it was the inner Earth people, and they were like mutated, yes, okay, demon like people, and they would kidnap the ones that were uh, that were up on the surface. I'm trying to remember. The what ones they were on called, the surface but... were the Eloy. Yes, and the ones on underneath. Uh, yeah, it started with like an M. I can't remember. Yeah. Morlocks? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think you're right. Morlocks, yeah, that, Morlocks. Sound, that sounds right. Anyways, we'll go with it. But, but the yeah. reason why they had to go underground was because the the cat the catastrophe that had happened with the moon falling, I believe. Oh. Because, yeah, like I don't when... Remember. Yeah. I don't remember on that it, one. But the gist of it is, is you know, they would fight up there. They could fuck up the moon. Half the moon could fall to Earth and fucking wall die. Yeah, yeah. I mean, who knows, right. man? I mean, obviously, I, I, <laughs> I mean, it's pretty extreme to say somebody's going to blow up the moon because it would. I, I don't know how anything would survive if something like that happened. But I definitely think that there are shenanigans at foot up on the moon for as far as being there and then i think that they are getting ready with this artemis one to stage uh some kind of calamity and uh make it similar to the challenger event which after the challenger event the public said no more moon tries no more going to space it's not worth it and i think they're going to do that again so very possibly yeah and with that being said a new space race. China adds urgency to U.S. return to moon. Telling you, man, they are pushing this hard. I, I think this is coming. I think they're going to try and do something, some kind of catastrophe with this. Because, again, here's my complaint. Part of this whole Artemis One mission is that they are dropping off supplies and materials on the moon first with no crew, automated Nothing but materials. They're doing a whole thing with Scoop, uh, 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 Snoopy and shit, a bunch of random shit to just threw in there to, to go around the moon as some publicity stunt. And they're going to drop off a bunch of materials, and then they are going to 
Um, they are going to send the people to this staging, orbital staging platform, orbiting the moon, and then put the people on the moon. Why so many steps? Why not send everything in one launch? Because that gives them ample... Look, they've already dropped off the materials. So they don't need technically to drop off the people if there's already people there. What you need is to cut off the public. So what better way to do that than to create a catastrophe of some kind to make you guys it, can't go into space until we figure out what happened bingo and they're already saying oh the radiation and the debris dude they're they're coming up with every reason to not go to the moon it, with the delays and uh, dude i'm telling you it is lining up to a gigantic cr- uh, c- uh, catastrophe that is going to cut off all public want, general public want to go to the moon, and they have every reason to lock it down and go completely private, like they did before. Look how many black budget projects happened after the 80s. It was like, poof, just, because... They're because just going to drop off space tanks. That's right, and, and uh, the public didn't want to fund it anymore. Well, guess what? We don't, they don't need the public to fund anything anymore. What you do is you just need a black budget project. And you can fund it however you want. And it's classified. Public doesn't even gain access to it. It's great. No. Nope. So it never happened. No. So with this uh, new space race, uh, let's read the article. This is, by the way, this is from uh, clickorlando.com. Super credible. <laughs> Uh, it's not oh, yeah. just rocket fuel propelling America's first moonshot after half a century lull. Strategic rivalry with China's ambitious space program is helping drive NASA's effort to get back into space in a bigger way as both nations push to put people back on the moon and establish the first lunar bases. War on the moon, y'all. American intelligence, military, and political leaders make clear they see a host of strategic challenges to the U.S. and China's space program in an echo of the U.S.-Soviet rivalry. Boom, there you go, new Cold War. They're announcing it right there. Yep. In an echo of the U.S.-Soviet rivalry. I'm telling you, they're, they're, they might as well be blasting it out, just announcing it. Hey, we're going to start a new Cold War, except now it's going to be in space. Get it? It's cold. Space is cold. Ha, ha, ha. Right. It's not the vacuum wars. <laughs> I love it. The, the Dyson sphere. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, that's great. That's great. Comb the desert. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's right. So in an echo of the U.S.-Soviet rivalry that prompted the 1960s race to the moon, that's as China is quickly matching U.S. civil and military space accomplishments and notching new ones of its own. On the military side, the U.S. and China trade accusations of weaponizing space. Senior U.S. defense official warns that China and Russia are building capabilities that take out the satellite systems that underpin U.S. intelligence, military uh, communications, and early warning networks. Now, with that being said, do you think that they don't see the massive U.S. presence in space as a threat? You know, I mean, SpaceX is balls deep in space. So is Bezos. Yep. So do you think that maybe they're, I mean, like a lot of things is they're like, why is China moving ships around? Well, because we move ships around, you know? So, I mean, Jesus, we're all over the motherfucker. So, of course, they're going to be like, hey, we need to be there. Yep. It's crazy. So, yeah, of course, they're they're going to start taking, dude, China and Russia start taking out satellites. And it is going to knock out internet, which right there, I'm telling you, look, I'm going to fully admit this. If we lose internet, I'm going to eat my own arm. I'm going to be pissed. I don't know what I'm going to do. You know, I I would love to say I could uh, survive with no internet, but it is my drug of choice. Aside from cannabis, games. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Well, yeah. I mean, okay. I've got. I got a long list of uh, of addictions. 
But yeah. definitely up there is Wi-Fi, man, and internet. But damn, dude, I mean, I'm telling you, this is this is some scary shit. I mean, my Wi-Fi. <laughs> the the whole the whole world functions on internet now. Mm, every every time you swipe a debit card, internet. Anytime you Bluetooth, well, maybe not Bluetooth. But without Bluetooth, like, what the fuck are you going to attach it to? I mean, I suppose you're going to do Bluetooth, but with no internet, like, what's, what's, what's the point of living? I just, it's, it's a hard to imagine. I'm sure people are just like, Jesus, this pussy. <laughs> yeah, it's sad when you can't play Mortal Kombat with your friend in Vietnam. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, no shit. Oh man. But so I know that there's been American companies or inventor or whatever you want to call it that are researching making uh debris collecting. Oh yeah. Uh satellite mm-hmm. the hunter satellite things. Yeah, they're repurposing and satellites. To to collect the debris that's up there mm-hmm. like and like reuse it to like there. build other other uh well, satellites and whatnot so if they could use it to collect trash why couldn't they use it to kamikaze a fucking satellite from russia or china yeah you're yeah dude that's exactly or like, vice versa or you vice have a you have a satellite up there that's a trash collector give me a break you know, yeah, it was, it's it, gonna collect some trash, and it's gonna be your top-notch satellite. <laughs> exactly. It's like when they said, you know, with the Starlink thing, you know, oh, Elon Musk wants to put sixty-five thousand satellites in space to give the world the best internet. Really? That's the That's only reason. Missiles. Come on. So here's what's funny: is he, you know, says this that that's the purpose, and then before Starlink is even available to the world releases the world's most advanced GPS to the military. (laughs) So basically he got the public on board to allow to, to basically say, here's what we're launching into space. But then one of the first things he launches is GPS satellites for the military. So everything look, and I want to believe that Elon Musk is a good guy. I want to believe that he's in this for humanity he seems to be doing some good things, but I'm telling you, this world is corrupted and people that are at the top, the way to get there, I don't think you can stay uncorrupted in the majority of cases. And so before mm-hmm. before they actually opened uh, Starlink to their public customers, yeah, the customers that like pre-ordered it yeah. had to pay like fucking... A thousand dollars, I think, or some shit. It like was five hundred dollars plus ninety nine a month. Yeah, it and some most mo- like I shit. checked it out, and that's what it was for me. I know people, oh, some okay. people, they jumped on super early, so they like did yeah. a prepaid type. Like I, I, I think there was an advanced waiting list for a time period. I'm not sure, but I know that that's the standard is five hundred down, or you know, to buy everything, and then ninety nine a month. That and and mind you, but it still, is that's... it is amazing internet. I'm not saying it's not super advanced internet. It certainly is. But if you're telling me that a, a satellite can't be a dual purpose, I'm going to say you're a liar. You know, I yeah, mean, these they... satellites, when you look at them, these are insanely technical. And, and who, who fucking knows what they can do? Nobody knows what they can do. Think about how small they're making components nowadays for stuff. Exactly. And so, like, how many of those small components can you fit on there? There's, like, that many sensors. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So, you know, and, of course, this uh, this article goes into, you know, there's a civilian side of the space race talking about, you know, these companies that are like SpaceX that are going up there. According to Senator Jim Inhofe, an Oklahoma Republican, in a decade, the U.S. has gone from the unquestioned leader in space to merely one of two peers in a competition. See, 
That right there, that's fighting words. Okay? Like, unquestioned leader in space, that, that's an aggressive sentence right there. We were an unquestioned leader, meaning like authoritarian. And then now it's a, comp- a competition for space? You motherfuckers. There is plenty of room. Is there not? I don't know. What the there fuck is. is the goddamn rush to destroy other countries now in space? Like, what the fuck, man? It's just, you know, they're just playing around with the future of humanity here. It's really, really fucking scary to think, like, that they're just screwing around with maybes. I mean, who knows what this is going to look like? I just, it's it's terrifying, man. I mean, of all the things that I think about that's really scary going on on Earth, which is scary. There's some scary shit going on. I just think we have no clue what's really going on in space. And they're just throwing terms out. You know, like battle for land and on the moon and we're going to build bases and lunar bases and, bat, you know, we're, we're in competition with these other countries. Scary shit, dude. Scary shit. Can we all just get along? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dude, we're going to have to. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have to. I mean, we're going to have yeah. to get, especially in this, especially in this. Like, I'm not, I'm not for a one world government yeah. by any means. Oh, yeah. But at some point in the future, I see that happening on this planet to try and get people to fucking work together to be able to survive. Well, look, I am not, I am anti-government. Fuck the government. I don't think we need a one world government. I don't think we well, need. I'm, I'm, go- I'm not I mean, saying... people, people say that we need government and I know you're not saying this. I'm just saying people say that we don't, you know, that we can't exist without governments. We can we should i my I favorite we thing can't simply because people think that way not not that we can't oh i see what you mean yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah that they think that we can't do it without government yeah, there's certainly. so many of them they're the majority hey man i just keep looking at it this way the government's proven it day after day they're they're proven we can't trust them they're proving we cannot rely on them day after day man so pretty soon they're going to convince the world I don't have to do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. more and more people are just like, this is fucked. We are, I mean, just everything that's going on worldwide with relationships deteriorating proves they don't know what the fuck they're doing with foreign policy and anything else. Any, but any, all the government is completely fucked up. They're in it for themselves. And we, the people, are just going to be left to rot when they've taken what they want. And so, you know, I don't like to go political, man, but absolutely 100% fuck the government. Oh, and my favorite thing, and look, this will be the last thing I say on politics, and then I'm moving the fuck on. But we're terrorists, bro. They came out, they redefined the term terrorist to include those with a personal grievance against government. 100% terrorist. Guilty. (laughs) Guilty. All day long, man. I got a lot of personal grievances. So stack them up, man. Stack them up. Okay? I got a lot of them. So, uh, hey, uh, everybody. Uh, DOJ, DOD, uh, you know, government as a whole. Uh, Fuck you. Get fucked. Get fucked! Terrorist. Now I got to come up. Oh, I already have a terrorist name. I forgot. I was given one back in the day. Who knew? Who knew? It was just a gamer tag thing. Ben Hameen. That's my terrorist name. I already got one. I'm ready to rock this shit. Anyways. <laughs> All of a sudden, <laughs> FBI just raids in here. I, I'm just, I'm just, right. a dart goes in my neck, and I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Anyways. Did the agents get you, or are you stroking out, Ben? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Blink twice if it's the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, fuck. And my eyes are just both blinking at different times, so you can't tell if it's a yes or a no. Because <laughs> they're Side just... Your face is all slooped. They just put a cattle prod in my ass and hit the trigger, and now I'm just like... <laughs> Oh, you got a <laughs> So, uh, according to WeonNews.com, uh, Kiev astro- Astronomical Observatory claims UFOs hovering over Ukrainian skies. I just wanted to do this because I knew this would be a palate cleanser because be- when I was putting the show together, I knew I was going to get fired up about my anti-government stance because I just know myself so I knew I was going to have to talk about something not political which of course Ukraine fucking whatever but um, it had to be something UFOs to just as a palate cleanser (laughs) so because I had to be you know off the fuck the government shit because I didn't want to get all depressed you know what I mean oh yeah so uh so Kiev Astronomical Observatory claims UFOs hovering over Ukrainian skies. The article says, according to a recent reprint publication released by Kiev's uh, main astronomical observatory in collaboration with the nation's National Academy of Science, experts in the country are looking to the skies and observing something they didn't expect, an excessive amount of unidentified flying objects. Okay, so let me get this straight. So Kiev's main astronomical observatory is in collaboration with uh, Ukrainian NASA? Right? National National Academy of Science. The only thing missing is aeronautics. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, So Ukraine has its own NASA, basically? That is also an observatory? I wasn't sure about this. I was like, uh, I'm not sure. But apparently experts from this National Academy of Science in Ukraine is collaborating with uh, the observatory. So anyways, to have a lot of UFOs, although the Pentagon in the U.S., has long hinted, speculated, and warned that some UFOs may be cutting-edge military technology from foreign militaries. See, they always want to put it off on something else, dude. They, yep. Oh, it's either other countries. So right now they're admitting it could be domestic, and they love to do that. That's my guess is that it is absolutely us and other countries, not aliens, or at least the majority of them. Uh, think secret anymore. Just come out and say, yep, this is what we got. Fucking right. catch us if you can, bitches. Bitches. Uh, the paper Sorry. does not... <laughs> Uh, particularly China and Russia, of course, the people they want to have be the enemies. They're foes. You know, it's just like terrorists, dude. They pointed at a country, said, we want to go in there. They're full of terrorists. And I'm not saying there weren't terrorists, but, you know, we created a lot of them. And, you know, here you have, yeah. oh, they're pointing the finger at China and Russia. They have the cutting edge military technology that's making you call UFO. It's their fault. Uh, the Ukraine paper. Why are we so quick to take a backseat to them? Exactly. They you... have it, but we don't. <laughs> yeah. It's because we don't want to admit it. They, I'm telling you, dude, they are doing everything they can. In fact, I got an article coming up where I'm gonna we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, the Ukraine paper is noteworthy in particular because it not only demonstrates how science has continued to advance during the war, but also provides an explanation for these sightings. We see them everywhere. We observe a significant number of objects whose nature is not clear. Now, how in any way does it explain these sightings to be classified as UFO? See, that's the other thing they're doing. They're like making it out like, oh, we solved it. They're UFOs. You see what I mean? Yeah. Like even the Senate hearings, they they go, they go oh, well, uh, you know, yeah, we don't know what they are. They're, they seem to be otherworldly. There you go. We solved it for you. It's like, no, 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 hold on. We, we've we known this. Like this. This explains the sightings because, oh, well, they're UFOs. We see them everywhere. We observe them. You know, there we go. There you have it, your explanation. I don't get that. 
Unidentified aerial phenomena. That's the other thing. They changed the term. I is the title of the essay. Events are observed using data from the main astronomical observatory of the NAS, N-A-S, telling you, dude, is Kiev. And imagine like NASA is the new NATO. Like all of a sudden, instead of military bases, we're popping up space. Starships. Yeah, dude. All of a sudden, there's all these... I really think it is like playing this game that I play, man. The Eve? Yeah. I want to try it. You're going to have to when you get to your computer. I'm going to. I'm going to do a lot of things when I get that motherfucker. Hey, guess what? what? You can't tell the difference between a fighting ship and a mining ship. That's right. That's the truth, bro. That's the That's truth. It, How man. would we know? How would we know? That's very accurate. I'm excited to play. Oh, yeah, dude. Well, you can make any mining ship a fighting ship in there. We're going to do it. Shameless plug for Eve the game. Yeah, sorry, guys. <laughs> the authors of the study claim that because of their interest in the topic, observatories decided to take on the task of looking for UFOs as a separate initiative. Let me just tell you something. If you think that these scientists just decided on their own with no funding to study UFOs using the equipment that's authorized. I mean, look, this these these funding things are pretty sometimes pretty strict. So, I don't know, man. I want to I want to say that there there was definitely some directive to go this route. There was definitely somebody pulling strings. I think so. The researchers separate the phenomenon they say saw into two groups, cosmics and phantoms. We note that cosmics are luminous objects brighter than the background of the sky. We call these ships names of birds, swift, falcon, eagle. Phantoms are dark objects with contrast from several to about 50%. I don't understand what that means. Anyways, either way... There's UFOs supposedly in Ukraine. Here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say that Ukraine has now become the staging area for a lot of things. We have had joint Russia-NASA missions for 20 years. I think this war, there's something going on there. And I think there's some collaboration going on despite what it looks like. And I think part of this involves these space spaces popping up in these areas that are going to be staging areas because the U.S., we ask questions. We ask sometimes where our money goes, whereas in other countries, they don't. So it makes a lot of sense, like a lot of corporations did, move this shit to other countries so you can get away with stuff you can't get away with in the U.S. So when you talk about a new world order, a one world government, I think instead of government, it's going space, this, this NASA deal. I think NASA could be the new NATO, and that's what's going to happen. Four-letter agencies, dude, three and four-letter agencies, banned. I had news. NASA's really the Illuminati. Ha <laughs> ha, man. A rose by any other name still smell as sweet. You know, you can call a shit turd, but uh, it still smells like shit. So, I don't know where I was going with that. I'm just saying, like, you can call it whatever name you want, but it's it's still that. Uh, here's an interesting one that I thought was odd. Harpoons, robots, and lasers. How to capture defunct satellites and other space junk and bring it back to Earth. Here's what you were talking about, I think, is where you were uh, going with this, right? Yeah, actually. And I didn't even get prompted by the link. <laughs> there you go, man. Well, that's why we try and find things that have to do with each other. Well, and it's just, it, it goes along with all this, you know? Makes sense. Yep. So more than half... Of the thousands of satellites in orbit are now defunct. And this accumulation of floating space debris has been described as a fatal problem for current and future space missions and human space travel. See how they're doing this? 
They're making it sound very, very dangerous, which I'm not saying it isn't. I just, how would we know? An estimated 130 million objects smaller than one centimeter and 34,000 larger than 10 centimeter are traveling in orbit at speeds of thousands of kilometers, oh, excuse me, kilometers per hour, according to the European Space Agency. A report presented at this year's European Conference on Space Debris suggests that the amount of space junk could increase 50-fold by 2100. While many fragments of space junk are small, they travel so fast their impact has enough energy to disable a satellite or cause significant damage to space stations. Have you guys ever seen the movie Gravity? I have not. Dude. I don't think or I don't remember it. Phenomenal phenomenal movie but i have seen a picture of what of what a micro meteorite can do to like fucking six inch thick fucking metal oh oh i see what you mean yeah 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 like uh when when they've done impact tests and stuff like that on on different materials yeah oh yeah i see what you mean yeah stuff like that yeah like Oh my god, dude. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, it's uh it's really insane. Well, the movie Gravity is amazing because it really shows like in this uh, I the music and and the I, I'm not a huge Sandra Bullock fan. I know, I know, I get shit from everybody, but I'm not uh and uh but the way that they show the impacts with zero sound, because the idea is, you know, obviously in space you're in a vacuum, so there's no sound. And that's something that they do in a lot of shows and movies, obviously, because it's weird having these lasers and whatnot going off with no, pew, 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 you know, stuff. So they put sounds in. But the idea, though, the, the, the theory, I've never been there, so I don't know, is that space is silent. And they're so, this is one of those cases where a satellite gets damaged um, and it ends up launching debris and that debris is going around in orbit. So they have to calculate and it just annihilates the space station that they're on and ends up launching Sandy B into the, uh, the, the space and, and George Clooney's got a rescuer and he's talking her through it and he's telling her jokes, something about, a something I can't remember anyways, but great movie. If you get a chance, check it out good movie but either way okay so while many fragments of space oh yeah i already read that both the hubble telescope and the solar maximum mission satellites had coin sized holes punched into them by flying debris and a mirror on nasa's james webb space telescope was damaged by micro meteoroids most satellites were not designed with the end of their usefulness in mind about 60 percent of the 6,000 satellites in orbit are now out of order Along with the smaller objects, these defunct satellites constitute a major problem both for existing and future satellites and space stations. Um, yeah, so so it goes into what I've said for a while, which is, you know, these mega constellations going in by SpaceX and Amazon of 50,000 more satellites. And if you think that they're not going to cause debris, if you think there won't be problems there, if you think, look, we could collect all the debris... And you're still going to get micro meteoroids. So these little tiny space pebbles that are launching at supersonic speed are still going to tear your shit up, meaning you're going to have more debris. So what's going to happen? Well, what's going to happen is, is that they're going to continue to take funding away to continue to, it's going to be like recycling all over again, a gigantic scam. And so now, but now we're going to have space recycling, but we humans got to pay for it. You see, you see how that goes? More funding, more. That's what this is all about. It's all about pulling funding to put into space. And they could tell you it's for collecting garbage. How the fuck are you going to know? How are you going to know they got a space garbage man up there collecting space garbage and recycling it at the space dump. 
How are you going to know that? You got to check in on it with their cameras that they put on the ISS and point them wherever they want you to see the same way that they take pictures of the moon and Mars and all that shit. It's only what you want to see, what they want you to see. It's so easy to do this. But of course, to us, what do they tell us? Hey, if we want to go to space, we got to clean it up. And if we got to clean it up, then we got to put these satellites in space to clean up other satellites. <laughs> it's like, Jesus. Which are technically armed yeah, oh, satellites. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah. Thus, yeah. thus, we are arming space. Oh yeah. Yep. It's all a big circle. Yep. We do it because they do it, and they do it because we do it. Mm-hmm. And they put a tiny little blurb in here. Scientists have warned the rapid development of mega constellations risks several tragedies of the commons. Tragedies of the commons. What the fuck does that mean? Uh, I think it's stuff that's um, oh, I don't look. overlooked. Maybe, I don't know. Here, I'll look. You you do what you're doing and all. Thank that. you, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Ray says fuck. there would probably fake some trash pickup footage just to sell it to motherfuckers. For sure, for sh- guaranteed, they're gonna go up there. They're gonna launch. Shatner again. They're going to launch all these people. It'll be like Shatner and Miley Cyrus go to the moon, take some pictures in front of some space trash, and they're going to show you some guy, you know, that's giving a big thumbs up in his fucking uh, space garbage truck and uh, just like, look at us cleaning up the streets. Meanwhile, down on Earth, they can't even fill fucking potholes. You fucking fucks. Just taking it away, just completely giving up on Earth is the way I look at this. We can't clean up our own. We can't clean up enough trash down on Earth, the oceans and everything else. But now we got to put in a guaranteed billions of dollars, billions of dollars, which, by the way, by the way, me and you didn't have anything to do with. Nothing to do with. We had nothing to do with it. But but we're going to pay for it. Absolutely, 100%. We're going to pay for it. And we're, it's not going to benefit us in any way aside from the world's best internet. And your GPS will, will be better. <laughs> It'll be it's better. It's basically... It, yeah, it's basically... Like a, a small uh, one entity or a small group of entities that basically put themselves before the lower guys type. Oh, a hundred percent. And I think that's what they mean when they when they say tragedies of the commons. Yeah, they're I think talking that's about what they're talking how about. they're thinking about. Oh, we'll have the greatest internet in the world, mm. yay! But they're overlooking the fact of ground based astronomy. Uh, low Earth orbit, the Earth's upper, upper atmosphere. They're talking about how uh, there's going to be more aluminum yeah. from re-entries of the Starlink mega constellation. Oh, for sure. Than what's done, been done through meteorites throughout the history of Earth yep. type of thing. So, well, and yeah, think about how many more launches they're going to be doing. How many more rockets they're going to be launching in an endeavor oh, yeah. to put up these cleaning. So while they're cleaning up debris, keep in mind the they're whole time, earth. this is like, this is like this. It's like a vacuum cleaner that sucks up dust while puffing out dust at the same time. Maybe at a lesser amount, but it's still doing it. That picks up dust, but blows out cigarette smoke. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Instead. There we go. So, yeah, it smells like your aunt Carol's house. You know, you're you're getting you're getting the floor clean, but you're dying of fucking carbon monoxide. <laughs> exactly. That's right. Getting cancer and shit. I'm but telling the you, floor this is, is clean. Yeah. 
This is a big, I mean, it's just, this is, look, I keep going back to this, and I'm going to say it again. Warner Von Braun in the 70s to his nurse saying, hey, in an endeavor to continue to pull funding from the public to put in the black budget, they will, they will use false flags like communism, terrorism, some kind of global catastrophe, which I believe is we're in. And, and then an alien invasion. Now, I'm kind of getting to the point where I'm almost convinced that they don't need an alien invasion. They don't need to invade with aliens. If you can say that China is going to take over the moon, you could say China. You could literally have any country. You could say it's the Russians. It's the Chinese that are coming down and invading us from space. You could say that they're... It's the North Koreans. Yeah, you could say anybody. You don't need... You could stick with the communists and the terrorists and not have to admit to aliens. So now at this point, I think it's a toss-up on what it's going to look like, what it's really going to be. And I, I'm convinced that there will be some kind of false flag maneuver, as I think that there's been a series of small ones already. But I think definitely there there is going to be some kind of... of uh, False flag maneuver. I think this Artemis one is going to be a big staging point for this. There's going to be some kind of catastrophe involved that they're going to cut off access to the moon and they're going to still continue to say, we need to clean it up. And then you'll have, you'll have this staging platform potentially with debris after it explodes. You'll have all kinds of things that they need to clean up even more. So, and then they're just going to keep pumping up satellites up there because the public wants better internet. And look, I'm right, I'm right there with you. I want better internet. I just went over my addiction to internet, so I'm right there with you. But I, I still have to ask, what's it going to look like and what's it going to cost? And I think it's going to be in the billions, and it's going to take away from other things here on Earth like it's already doing. Look at what they're already doing with misappropriation of funds. No food, all kinds of shit going on, all kinds of shit going on that we can't even account for, let alone what the fuck is going on in space. And they just keep going harder. You know, I might sound a little cynical right now and I don't mean it. I have a huge, you sound cynical. Listen to me. Well, okay. But (laughs) there's, we spend so much money in. Okay. So, Again, it's one thing if, say, now, we d- we don't, I don't think, but just for an example, say that we gave some money to Great Britain. Hypothetical. Hypothetical. We gave a bunch of money to another for, country during wartime. To, to help feed their, th- th- their people. Yeah. All right. Like, that I kind of understand, because we halfway, you know, at least half of that money is going to go where it should go. You know? Whereas there is numerous countries that have absolutely no government and we're just pumping in aid. Yeah. Oh monetary yeah. aid. It's money laundering. Export aid. And like we have people here that are homeless on the street that cannot eat. Now, if it's if it's their fault that they're on the street. But there's people that are on the street that don't deserve to be there. Yeah, oh, I agree. Look, I look. Let's and look at help let's look at what's been. Let's look at the eighty billion dollars. And look, I don't want to get all political, but you look at the eighty billion dollars or whatever that's fucking left this country and gone somewhere else. I think you know where that could have gone to protecting schools, to building infrastructure, repairing food plants that have been exploded. That have been blown up a bunch of other things to build infrastructure here, but but again, it look it as a global thing, as a global thing. Globally, if we don't look at just the U.S., if we look at the big picture, and that's why I like to look at the big picture because then I can say fuck the government as a whole. Yeah. If you look at the big picture, the big picture is as a world. 
They are pumping money into space. Israel's involved in this. China, Russia, North Korea, they're all getting involved in space. Why? Why? There is something going on, man, and I it's definitely the moon. That's the closest place, but I think they're pushing us to a new technological age that they for have. Them. What's the, Oh, yeah, for them. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, us, us peasants, no. <laughs> exactly. For them, As yeah. they say, tragedies of the commons. And again, all yeah. the links will be in the show notes. You guys can check these out for yourselves, these, these articles, but uh, and read them in their entirety. Um, but yeah, it is clear that uh, we, the people, are not the priority in any way. In any way, shape, or form. Uh, and it is very, very clear and scary. <laughs> Unfortunately. The almighty dollar bill is the primary focus. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Okay, so another palate cleanser, because, again, I knew I was going to go crazy on that one, too, um, is this. Four-billion-year-old rock from Earth was discovered on the moon. What theorists say? In January 2019, scientists in Australia made a shocking discovery, revealing that a chunk of rock brought back by the crew of the Apollo 14 moon landings was actually originated from Earth. Now, for those of you that are saying, yeah, like, like Jesse, she's one of these that says, well, look, I believe that the moon collided with Earth. I think this is her stance. Uh, the moon collided with the Earth or, or something collided with the Earth and formed the moon separately or something like that. I can't remember. Um, so I believe this is confirming that. Um, scientists have long believed that the moon was formed from the debris left behind after a Mars-sized planet called Thea, also known as Thea. <laughs> okay. Uh, it, they just take the I out. It's pronounced, I think, exactly the same. Uh, collided with Earth. This cataclysmic event is widely accepted as the leading explanation for how Earth got its satellite. But there's still a whole lot we don't know about this dynamic moment in our planet's history. When Apollo astronauts explored the lunar surface, they found several strange rocks that deemed out of place. These angular fragments are known as blue loop rocks because of their distinctive blue-green color and looped appearance when viewed under magnification. These peculiar rocks were first discovered on the moon by astronauts during the Apollo 14 mission in 1971. Since then, scientists have identified similar specimens at various other sites on the moon, but what they are exactly and where they come from has remained a mystery. In January 2019, scientists in Australia made a shock. Oh, I already read that. The scientists stated in an article published in the journal Earth and Planetary Science Letters that the rock may have been part of debris that was flung to the moon. Okay, we get the idea. They're just going to keep going over it. But... That's awesome. I mean, I think uh, I think it's pretty cool that uh, they're kind of confirming this in a way. I guess, yeah. Are they confirming it? That's. I mean, that's what it seems like. It, it definitely adds weight to the one theory. More, one more piece of evidence to towards proving that. Yeah, yeah. There, yeah. We'll, we'll say that. Yeah, yeah. It's very interesting. Uh, it's just so fascinating, all the stuff that's coming out that is just knocking out or reaffirming. So there's there's a bunch of things coming out where they are just taking old theories and blowing them out of the water by finding fossils that are a million years old. You know, taking the, I mean, just all these anthropologists and archaeologists mainstream that have had all these theories that just claiming, you know, the, the earth is so old and whatnot are just being proven wrong right and left. And you have all these things. I think this is part of this disclosure event, whatever you want to call it, which is just a lot of information coming out on the Earth's origins, our origins that are making a lot of people question the, the mainstream thinking. And I think that's part of this breaking down of the norm so they can rebuild into something new in their image. And by they, I mean the clowns that uh, try and rule over us. So, yeah, man, I don't know, a 4 billion-year-old rock. Crazy. 
That's a lot of years. <laughs> very, very observant of you, Bill. It certainly yeah. is. It's a lot of zeros. It's a great fucking day, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, are you on drugs? <laughs> yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I am. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, and then, you know, along with this, things that are coming out, um, there's a great article that says, scientists think we are about to discover alien life. Talk about announcing a false flag, which I think is, look, if they're telling you they're going to do this. They already did. It's a, well, yeah, and it's a false flag. In this case, you really think we're going to discover alien life genuinely? I, I don't know. Here's what the article says. Uh, this is uh, giantfreakandrobot.com, all links in the show notes. Technology has been growing far behind what anyone could have imagined. That is also the case for devices like the James Webb Telescope, which is now being used to photograph images of deep space in far better quality, blah, blah, blah. An astrophysicist named Sasha Kwans has echoed the idea of finding alien life in space, which is based on technological advances that have occurred and are being planned currently. According to Kwans, in 1995, my colleague and Nobel Prize Leret, I think that's what that word is, Didier Qualos, Qualos discovered the first planet outside our solar system. Today, more than 5,000 exoplanets are known, and we are discovering them on a daily basis. Quantz has also theorized that alien life could be discovered based on the planets that the James Webb Telescope has been able to capture. However, even as powerful as that telescope is, these there are small planets that have yet to be detailed. There are now new devices being worked on that can fill in the gaps in what the James Telescope is able to capture. So I think what this is saying is that they are going to claim that they found life, and then again you could say that they're going to pull funding to go and find it. Well, yeah, in, in true fashion, they're like, yeah, look, we found where life should mm -hmm, be. Mm -hmm. Let's pay and go find it. Let's go get it. Hey, guys, we need more money. Because we found life. That's right. Well, if we go there, we'll see it, but we we know it should be there. Yep. Gotta love it. Oh, sneezing. Uh, Bless you. The thought of uh, them finding alien life got to my sinuses. Must be the aliens. Or the bullshit. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm allergic to bullshit. Yeah, I really think these are these are connected in a way of that uh, that they are going to try and uh, again just a massive endeavor to pull funding to go look for alien life out in the solar system, which, again, is just giving them reasons to go into space. I don't think it's for these reasons. I don't think it's for these reasons. I don't think they're going back to the moon just to go back to the moon, which is what they say they are. And I don't think they're going to pull off this plan the way they say they're going to. I think there's a bunch of other things that are going to take place. And, and they need uh, more money. That's right. That's right. That's what I think. They're needy bastards. <laughs> That's right, they are. They're needy and they're greedy. Here's another one. Uh, speaking of this, um, U.S. Navy says all UAP and UFO videos are classified and exempt from release. Now, here we have had these Senate meetings, these Senate hearings that the media and the government are all saying, oh, look, we're creating a new, we're creating a new uh, uh, department to study UFOs and UAPs and aliens. And uh, we're going to release all this disclosure, disclosure, disclosure. And then look at this. They're trying to lock it down. Of course. The story begins on April 28th, 2020, when the Black Vault filed FOIA case. Uh, okay, wait, let's go back. Since December of 2017, two videos that surfaced of alleged unidentified aerial phenomena sightings captivated the world. Months later, a third was released, and the only increased public interest into the topic, but also strengthened their voice for transparency about the mysterious phenomena. 
Even though the military said they are not cleared for public dissemination and considered leaked, the Navy later would officially release copies of the same in April of 2020. So those are the videos that came out, Tic Tac, Gimbal, and the Go Fast. Now, this is the group. At that moment, the Black Vault, Black Vault aimed to find out just that. So they began a pursuit to have the U.S. Navy release all of their videos that held a UAP designation. And after two, nearly two and a half years, the untold number of videos in the UAP designation have been fully denied due to national security. Which, by the way, they can throw that term on literally anything. Anything. In the name of national security, we have to classify this. And I don't know if you all knew this, but... If something has been deemed classified and a judge, you have to prove your innocence and that document that proves your innocence is classified, that judge did not have access to it, which therefore cannot verify the evidence that, claim, that ha holds your innocence. That's a scary thought. So if you needed a piece of paper that said, oh, hey, he's innocent because of X, Y, and Z, and if due to national security, they classify it. Judge can't use it. You can't use it to prove it. So here's here's the case. So Black Vault asked for a FOIA case uh, request for some case um, dealing with um, UAP. The the as I said the the Fleur one, which is known as the Tic Tac Gimbal and the Go Fast videos. Um, I just dumped my uh, energy drink on myself. Oh no! <laughs> hey, at least it's not at your house this time. Hey, thanks, man. <laughs> uh, uh, it's not all over me. Well, that's good. Just a little. Sorry. Go ahead. So basically, he tried to FOIA request all these cases, uh, from all the way up to July eleventh, twenty twenty two. All of them were denied. It said, apparently, according to this, it says the UAP task force has responded back to DNS 336 and it stated that the requested videos contain sensitive information pertaining to unidentified aerial phenomena and are classified and are exempt from disclosure in their entirety under exemption 5 USC, blah, 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 blah. In accordance with executive order, 13526 and the UAP security classification guide. So here's what I had said. Here's what I, and, and I, you know, you guys can go through this on your own. If you would like the whole thing, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Here's the reason I bring this up. The moment that they started talking about these Senate hearings and how they were going to disclose everything. This goes all the way back to 2020 when Trump said he was going to he filed an executive order that the Pentagon had to release all this stuff uh on UAPs and UFOs which they released this bullshit nine page report nine pages on all the UAP stuff all of it nine pages that basically said uh yeah we acknowledge they exist we don't know what they are no shit so then they come out this year, or last year, this year, this year, and say, we're going to have Senate hearings, and we're going to talk about it. We're going to get to the bottom of this. The public deserves to know. No, you don't. According to them, no, you don't. And so here Not you have place. it. The idea of FOIA was this, the Patriot Act, the Freedom of Information Act. That's what FOIA is. Is supposed to be mean that the public has the right to put in a FOIA request of any information except for national security, which is a term they love to throw around. So I've said from the beginning, they're never going to release this. You know why? It would make it, it means that they would have to admit they were lying. They're never going to release any of this because it holds the truth and they don't want you to have the truth. They don't want you to have it. Why? Because it doesn't do them any good. 
It doesn't do them any good for you to have it. And you know what? For you to sit there and speculate as to why you need it, they don't give a fuck. All they got to do is say, it's national security. It's in your own best interest because these other nations, if they got a hold of this information, they could use it against you. And we're on your side. Dude. Dude. Telling you, it's all lies. All lies. Just so they can get more money. Absolutely. Why did they start up a new UFO task force? For funding. And that's it. So here they got your money. They got your money. They did the Senate hearings. They said, hey, gang, we need to start up a new group so we can study these proper. And we were all like, okay, do it. And then here you go. Classified. National security. Dude. They're never going to give it up again. It's to me, it's the same boat as cannabis. They're never going to fully release cannabis to the people because that wouldn't mean that they would have to admit they were wrong. And they don't do that. There's uh, again, there's no reason why they would want to. It doesn't, it doesn't, it, it's not they in their space. That's right. So instead they'll buy it out. They'll change it. They'll do other, they'll do anything, but admit they were wrong. They'll, they'll release something that they say has the chemical makeup of it mm-hmm. and has some other shit added in there. That's right. And that's legal. <laughs> but the shit that it's modeled after that is not just fucking pure man-made chemicals, that is illegal. Yep. Biological warfare, FDA approved. GMO. All kinds of things. You can throw all kinds of acronyms on it. Yeah. Uh, so... The next one, going into some technology, okay, some technology. And, you know, this is, again, going into the whole idea of the government does not want you to have anything. They don't. They don't want you to have it. And this shows it right here. This is a great one. Startup says train power by valence flux could travel 620 miles per hour. A Canadian startup called Transpod wants to revolutionize ground-based transportation by sending magnetically levitated trains through vacuum-sealed tubes at ludicrous speeds. It's highly ambitious. Ludicrous speed. (laughs) Now. It's a highly ambitious and immensely expensive, never mind comically vague, concept that's generated some serious buzz in recent weeks. Uh, So, yeah, they compared this to the Hyperloop. The Hyperloop is a concept popularized by Tesla CEO Elon Musk eons ago, but despite millions in funding, the handful of Hyperloop companies in existence have yet to break any meaningful ground, and we can't help but wonder if Transpod will suffer a similar fate. Here's what, here's what I think. They're telling you this because what did we say in a, a previous bonus episode? I said they had a plan to make these maglev trains to go to the moon. To go to the moon. Now, what do you need to go to the moon? Speed. So, you have a train powered by valence flux going 620 miles per hour. According to a company, its flux jet is a hybrid between an aircraft and a train. Dude, I'm telling you, this is what they're going to do. They're going to say it's not feasible for the public, but guess what we can do with it? We can transport materials into space. And we don't even have to use jet fuel, gang. I'm telling you, dude, that's what they're going to do with this. We're never going to get it. They're going to use this for space, to, and this is how they're going to get away from using jet fuels so they can make space green again. Oh, watch them. And this is funny because, once again, we talk about things coming full full circle. Okay? (laughs) Yeah. So this is is basically like if you were to maglev lift something off, you're basically putting it on a giant rail gun. Yep. Now, guess who did that? Who? You got a button for it, baby. Nazis! 
<laughs> That's right, I do. Werner von Braun. Werner von Braun. You're right. That was one of the ways that they first tried to launch off not not just like rockets that they would use to go to space, but rockets that they were just shooting at people. Yeah. They were using basically rail guns, maglevs. Yep. The hyperloop, the idea of spinning something at really fast speed and then launching it off, as I call it, the David and Goliath maneuver. The slingshot. The, the slingshot maneuver to spin it really fast. Man, if only little David had trademarked that move, he'd be still dead. <laughs> he, he'd be legend. Wait, he is legendary. <laughs> he, I guess he is legendary. Yeah. <laughs> I think he was in a book. Uh, uh, what's am I going to this? <laughs> yeah. Anyways, yeah, a, so that's that's, that's what I think this is all about. I don't think it has anything to do with giving it to the people. They're already saying it's comically vague, it's too expensive, highly ambitious. Remember the Hyperloop, that failure? It's never going to work. They're already saying. But what they're doing is this. they All they got to do is tell you the technology is possible. So then when it pops up, in your head, you go, well, yeah, I remember I'm talking about this. So, yeah, they told us. Eh, not in the way that they told you they were telling you. That's the whole point of this. Shiesty bastards. Shiesty bastards. I'm telling you. So, along with this, Chinese researchers test cars that hover over road using magnets. <gasps> Imagine that. Maglev cars, maglev trains. Are we going to the future? Not for you, though. How much you want to bet this is going to go to police, military, before it ever goes to us? They're going to exit the earth before it goes to us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Chinese researchers at Southwest Jiatong University have tested modified cars capable of magnetically levitating almost an inch and a half off the ground over a stretch of specifically modified highway. State-run media outlet, oh, whatever. A video of the test shows a modified passenger vehicle gliding along the surface while its four tires spin helplessly in the air, rendered useless by what appeared to be magnetic repulsors attached to the bottom of the vehicle. Is this really Back to the Future-esque future of the car? But that judging by the sick, I want one. So again, but here's what they say. But judging by the clunky equipment and rocky ride seen in the video, immense engineering challenges and likely safety concerns, the tech will possibly be not become practical. See? So what what does that mean? Same idea. They're saying the technology exists but it's not efficient or it's not safe enough for the public. Yep. Yet they let your Tesla drive you around by itself. <laughs> yeah. The speed was also striking. With cars reached a reported velocity of 143 miles an hour. Dude, I'm telling you, man, this is the future of the military and the police, this is so perfect. This is so perfect. Let Not to mention space. 100% they're going to use this in space. But this is what we're getting ready for, man. This is what we're getting ready for. 100%. 100%. I agree with you. Rhea says, and they uh, and people like Tom DeLong spreading misinformation that is selling to the stars. Lying bastards. To the Stars Academy, yeah. Yeah, what a fucking ridiculous shit show that is. All of them, dude. All of them. Tom DeLong, Lou El Elizondo, Gre uh, Greer, of course. I hate that motherfucker. <laughs> I say that in the most loving way, of course. I don't really hate him. I don't know him. I just do not understand what the fuck he is doing. And I'm very, very skeptical. Making money. Yeah, yeah, no shit. 
And yeah, I agree. So right? I just I, I watched that video of that car. Oh, did you? It it looked pretty rough, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, I'm not it, saying it it's looked, not, but I, but I just think, look, I, you could obviously perfect that and give it to the public, you know. But yeah, they're not gonna. They're not gonna do that. Yeah. And, and yeah, I mean, uh, like Ray says, sounds fucking cool. But uh, unfortunately, I just don't see us getting it. I think they're going to definitely use it for military. Do you know what's funny? Hmm. The really heavy magnets yeah. are mined in China. Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep. That's the worst part, man. I mean, that we cannot do it ourselves. We cannot do it ourselves. So if you want these things, it means it means uh, getting in bed with these other countries, and we don't have the best relationships with these other countries right now. So, yeah, we like to stay in our own bed. That's right. All right. So for the next story, here's what I wanted to do. Again, here here's what I did as a series of palate cleansers, because I knew I was going to be all up and. High on my uh, my high horse here, my little soapbox about the government and whatnot. Um, so I, I brought up a fun one, and uh, it has nothing to do with anything that we've been talking about, and that's why I like it. Uh, Vampire Grave shows 17th century fear of women who didn't fit in. Maybe this isn't going to go the direction I thought it was going to go. <laughs> Maybe this is going to be, be like a, like she was a weird and they picked on her. Um, here's what it says. A sharp sickle was placed over across her neck, ready to decapitate her should she jolt awake after death, and a padlock was put around her big toe. A padlock around her big toe. Here's what it says. The remains of a female vampire with a sickle across her throat are seen on August 30th after they were unearthed at an archaeological site in a 17th century cemetery in, Jesus, that word is crazy, by Gogzidzis, Poland. That's what scientists found when they excavated the corpse of a woman they believe was suspected of being a vampire in 17th century Poland. The unknown woman, thought to be young uh, and of a high social class, given that she was buried in a silk scarf, was probably accused of being supernatural because she stood out, experts said. A large protruding tooth may provide some clues. Hold on. Oh, yeah, you can kind of, in the picture, you can kind of see a weird protruding tooth. Vampire, I don't know, though. A professor of Poland's Nicholas, Nicholas Copernicus University in Tehran said burials involving the sickle are extremely unusual. Archaeologists from the university made the discovery in the southern village of Peen in the eastern European nation last month and published it. Ways to protect against the return of the dead, including cutting off the head or legs, placing the deceased face peen. down. What's that? You said Peen. I certainly did. <laughs> Sorry. I, I certainly did. And you know what it reminds me of? Penis. Penis. <laughs> Ways to protect against the return of the dead include cutting off the head or legs, placing the deceased face down to bite into the ground, burning them and smashing them with a stone. Instead, in this case, a sharp scythe is not laid flat, but placed on the neck in such a way that if the deceased had tried to get up, most likely the head would have been cut off or injured. The woman's exhumed remains are now being studied by the Polinsky's team. Her burial reveals paranoia and fear around vampires and the gender politics. Oh, boy. Interesting. And, you know, it actually makes me think. I'm glad I read this. It, it makes me, it's not the direction, hence why I don't pre-read most of this, as you can see, because I did not think that was going in the direction I thought it was going in. It's interesting because it just goes to show that superstition was and still is everywhere. I mean, now we're on aliens and ghosts and things like that, but, but I mean, human nature is human nature, man. People are paranoid. People are paranoid and we're, we're there now. We are absolutely there now. Again, all the link in the show notes, but, uh, 
again, it just really shows that ah, human nature, man, it never changes. Look at us now. Look at us now. You might as well be saying people are, are vampires. You got people going, you know, and in weird identify as vampires now. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Weird, man. And they uh, drink blood. This world, this world. It's very interesting. Very interesting. The world we're in now and what's coming about and, and what to think about what's headed our way, man. That's what makes this fun is that, uh, you know, the speculation involved. Like Ray Come says. On. We uh, all get to hang out with you. That's why it's fun, too. <laughs> hey, thanks. Appreciate that. And I get to hang out with you and all of you. Ray says uh, for this vampire story, she says all because she had a snaggle tooth. They damned her. Pretty lady. Poor lady. Good stuff. Vampire yeah, hunt. Witch hunt. Hell? Same shit. Yeah, you're right. Witch hunt, vampire hunt. Same thing, different label. And look what we got going now. Look at what we got going now. People, race, gender, politics, you name it. People are picking on each other. They're hating on each other. And it's paranoia. It's fear. It's it's the, it's the same it. thing, man. The same thing. The government fuel it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, in a big way. Well, look at what was going on during the Salem witch trials. What was going on? It was the th the elders of the village. The authority, the, the priests, the preachers, the people in authority. And then, of course, you had snitches. Yeah. But, yeah, you had a lot of... I don't like that chick. I'm going right. to go fucking tell on her. That's right. That's right. Get her strung up. Yep. And then you have the politics of the time fueling it, as you said. And right now, that's exactly what we have going on. And that's why we do this show, ladies and gentlemen. To get away from the politics. To get away from the propaganda, the paranoia, the bullshit. And have fun talking about this type of shit. You know, which is some bad news. But we have fun talking about it. You know, and try and look at it with a little bit of a sense of humor. But at the same time, try and call it out for what it is. That's what it is. So, yeah. and uh, again, I appreciate it. Great. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I appreciate all of you for joining me on this thought exercise that is UFO No. I love you all. Thank you so much, Ray. Thank you so much uh, for uh, following along, coming along with us, joining us on Discord. That all of you can do, by the way, you can join us uh, every Friday evening at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, give or take uh, 20, 30, 40 minutes depending on if we have our poop in a group or not. But we will. We will be going live on uh, Friday evening. So join us on Discord and talk to us while we're doing the show, and we will throw your comments in as we did with Rihanna's here. And, of course, I always appreciate your guys' support so much. I cannot tell you how much it means to me. Um, go check out the merch shop. Got some new shit on there. Thanks to Matthew Morfit Gave me a awesome idea for design, and we threw that up yesterday. So go check it out. Um, otherwise, keep supporting me, everybody. I love you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we'll keep the good hits a rolling. Love you all. Thank you so much. Yeah, Bill, thanks for joining me on the show, dude. Oh, dude, thanks for having me, man. Sorry always, that I'm always late. Nah, always appreciate your support, dude. It's great. And uh, input. Love it. Uh, oh, so, yeah. uh, go follow Bill. Uh blitzed 86 on twitch i'll put a link in the show notes as well and uh as always as i love to say keep your eyes to the skies watch out for the governments they're shoisty bastards bye 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 bye, bye.